How many times have you read something from your textbook and it just doesn't make sense? You read it again and it just makes less sense. You may be surprised to note that the textbook you use is not the only textbook for that subject in IB. You see, actually there are tons of publishers that make textbooks for the IB. The most popular ones are like Pearson, Hodder, Cambridge, Oxford. You may be using one of these books. Now, you may think that b because this is the book that your school told you to use, it's like the best book, right? It's not necessarily the reason why. You see, your school might pick a textbook for different reasons than the one you think. Maybe that's just a teacher's favorite, or maybe that's the most that's the textbook that most other schools in your district use. It's not necessary that they have looked at every single textbook, made a proper judgment and said, okay, this is the best textbook for our students. They could have just picked, all right, we've got to order a textbook. We'll just get this textbook. But what your school picks may not necessarily be the best for you. Now, why is this actually important? Well, each textbook has different advantages and disadvantages. And let me give you some examples from my life. I had this biology textbook, right? And it was the Oxford textbook. And I remember there was a chapter in the HL content on cell respiration. And I kid you not, I read that chapter multiple times and I could not understand it. I watched videos on YouTube and you know how much I love videos on YouTube. It helped a lot, but I still could not get it. What made that whole chapter click for me was when I opened up another textbook, a Pearson textbook. And the way that textbook was written specifically for that chapter was like a story. And I don't know, the way they explained it, it just made everything click. And that became one of my easiest chapters. So it was just interesting to see how one additional resource that you know my people from my school didn't even know of helped me so much for the chapter. I'll give you another example. Economics, and I'm talking about the old syllabus, not the current one. Uh, when I was studying it, there was a chapter on theory. Of, there was a whole part on theory of the firm, which is you know an HL topic, and I remember using uh, breaking my head using a textbook, and I kept on reading it and kept on reading it. I think it was by Ellie Tregakes. I kept on reading that textbook, and I just did not get theory of the firm. My friend says, "Hey, I've learned theory of the firm, and it's super simple." And I'm like, "Oh, how?" Oh, I'm using the Oxford textbook. And so I look at the Oxford textbook and I read it and it's just, it's just amazing. It just clicks in my head. And so it was just so funny how something so hard to understand in one textbook was easy to understand in the next textbook. Now, in economics, again, there were parts in the Oxford textbook that I just couldn't understand a topic. For example, the HL math part of economics. I just didn't get it from the Oxford textbook. But I looked at the Ellie Tregeek's textbook and it just made sense. And so these, both these textbooks had different advantages and disadvantages within the same subject. I wouldn't have classified one better than the other. Now, why am I telling you all this? It's to illustrate the point that each textbook has its own advantages and disadvantages and kind of its own style that may be suited towards you or not really for you. And there are specific features that each textbook does differently. For example, explanations. Some textbooks offer very concise explanations of topics, while others go on and on and on, more like a story. Uh, some textbooks have a lot of diagrams, a lot of pictures, and a lot of illustrations, while some mainly focus on text. Some textbooks mainly focus on the syllabus, while others try to include helpful information that might not necessarily be in that syllabus. You know, and even other things like formatting. Uh, some textbook is just basically text, while some textbooks are colorful and pictures, and you just you know you just like reading it. Uh, and it's also interesting that some textbook might be better at explaining specific chapters than other textbooks. And so it's just really interesting how these textbooks kind of do things differently, and they all have their pluses and minuses. And so what should you do as a student? Like, why am I telling you this? Well, it's very simple. Try to get your hands on more than the textbook you use. You might just find another one that works better for you. It may be the formatting, it may be the way they explain things. Sometimes you can't really put a finger on it, but some textbooks just work better for you. And that's really important because you need to find out what works for you and it may not necessarily work for all the other kids in your class, but it may work just for you and may help you understand that topic 
much, much better. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to learn every single thing from every single textbook. You know, you, you just need to have other references and that's always a good thing. You still need to stick to the syllabus guide. You know, different textbooks will kind of play on the syllabus a bit differently. I have a video on how you can look at the syllabus guide and judge a textbook based on that. But the point is, it's good to have other textbooks. And it really, really, and I'm not stressing this enough, it really, really may just be the deciding factor between you getting a six and a seven, just because it may make the subject much easier to understand. In my experience, I had multiple textbooks for all my HLs. For eco, I had two textbooks and I got a seven. For bio, I had two textbooks and I got a seven and a revision guide. And for business, I had two textbooks and I got a six. But I will tell you that if I did not have those two textbooks, I would have probably gotten a five. So you can really see the power of multiple textbooks. It's really interesting that almost all of us, we get a textbook from our teacher or we get the recommended textbook and we think that's just the best. And I wish I knew that this wasn't the case much sooner in IB because I would have used specific textbooks for specific reasons and would have made me grasp concepts so much easier. Remember, there's no perfect textbook just because your school is, let's say, the world-renowned school and uses a specific textbook doesn't make that textbook amazing. You need to find the textbook that works for you. If I had known this from the start of IB, things would have been quite different for me. I can tell you that. So remember, every IB student should know this about IB textbook. There's no perfect textbook. There's only, there may not even be one perfect textbook for you. It could be multiple, but the point is get your hands on more of them and I can guarantee you, and I can actually guarantee you, it will make a difference for you. All right.